Hello, good morning um, from this part of the world in the UK. This is um, your very own person, Ike Naomezu Dike of Modesty Group. <coughs> and welcome to another episode of our Modesty's Monday Motivation Series, MMM. And uh, this is episode 14. So um, we've made it to episode 14, which is very encouraging. And this is the second, <coughs> excuse me, this is the second episode in this new year 2020. Um, last week, we had our first episode in this new year, episode 13, where we spoke about um, how to focus or what you need to focus on this year and how to focus on your year. And we used this, uh, the word year as an acronym. Um, Y-E-A-R. So last year we talked about focusing on your year, where Y represented yield, E represented effort, A represented attitude, and R represented reason. Um, we made it clear that um, for you to make it a successful year, you have to focus on these four areas. So today we are going to talk about something um, very important as well and um, it's really important that we pay attention to this one today as well because it's really going to be very useful to us uh, but before i dive straight into um, this week's topic um, i just want to show appreciation to a lot of you who have um, really motivated and encouraged me on this journey and what we do every monday and how fruitful and how useful it's been to them and to everyone around them. And um, some people have gone as far as um, recommending my services to their friends and family, and that's how much trust they have in me. And uh, it all boils down to relationship and the confidence they're deriving from what we do here every Monday. And they have gone on to um, really encourage other people to engage us in their services I, excuse me, I've had a couple of um, referrals for um, our mortgage services uh, some of them we're already dealing with I've even had <laughs> the privilege of uh, being um, a marriage counselor where somebody thought that uh, I was wise enough to um, advise someone who I uh, was going through um, turbulent times in her marriage and needed somebody to speak to. Um, I spoke to her and to my utmost surprise, she said, I'm going to sleep very well tonight. Thank you so much for, um, for speaking to me. And it just goes to tell us how much impact you can have on people's lives. Um, it's not just about how much money you spend on people or buying them expensive gifts and all that. We can, be, we can be a gift to ourselves, to people, uh, just by me talking to them. Some people just need somebody to talk to. And if you lend your shoulder and if you lend your ears, they can lean on your shoulder. They can whisper things into your ears. And by just encouraging them or saying things to them that will really pacify their situation, you cannot um, overestimate how much of a positive impact that is um, to somebody's life and to that person's life. So I was really um, pleased that I spoke to this lady and she told me I am going to sleep very well tonight just because you've spoken to me. And then um, I, I pointed her in the direction of um, where she needs to go and get help and what she needs to do. Um, so it, it amazes me how such little things and such simple things that we overlook have huge impact on people's lives just talking to them. so make use of you know your natural talent and abilities and use that to impact on people's lives do not underrate how much of an impact that will have do not just say oh i haven't got anything to offer um i'll just let it be you've got something to offer look deep down inside you and use what god has given to you to bless other people so it's been um a good week and um we're looking forward to even a better week this week. Okay, um, enough of the preaching and someone. Let's dive straight into this week's topic. 
So today we are going to be talking about something very important. And this um, today's topic or this week's topic is um, derived from one of my you know major um, mentors and who inspires me. I've been inspired by his work and his books. And um, you know from what I've derived from that book, I've just chosen to share it with my audience today to break it down, to give it, you know, my own interpretation from the way I understand it and helping others to understand it too. Um, that person is no other person than Robert Kiyosaki. He is the author of um, the biggest and the best personal finance book you can ever read, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And Robert Kiyosaki, his latest edition of the book, which, you know, I'm reading also at the moment, um, this is 20 years later. So 20 years on from the first edition, that book is still making waves. That's how good the book is. So the latest edition that he kind of um, elaborated a lot of things on it 20 years later that I'm having to read now, it's just giving me an insight. And it's, uh, it's as relevant today as it was 20 years ago. So it just shows you that, you know, knowledge is ageless. Um, there are so many knowledgeable um there are so many wise words and you know um, knowledge that predates centuries and centuries back and up to today they are still relevant in today's world and the same thing could be said of Robert Kiyosaki's work um, Rich Dad Poor Dad so today's topic is going to be based on something that I picked up from that book that I wanted to elaborate and expatiate and explain and interpret it in my own way and my way in my own understanding so Robert Kiyosaki is a firm believer and preacher of financial intelligence. He really believes and preaches the fact that people should, you know, pursue financial intelligence. The more knowledgeable you are in financial matters, the greater your chance of, you know, making it rich or wealthy, if that is your ambition. And I, I, I really say that is your ambition because... It's not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody wants to be rich. Not everybody wants to be wealthy. But I'm talking to those who aspire to be rich and those who aspire to be wealthy. And those who want to manage their personal finances excellently well and live a comfortable life. Um, so if, if that's not your ambition, that's not your dream, if that's not your goal, I mean, um, it's not for you. But it's really important for those who have that level of aspiration. So today we're going to be talking on the four key skills to financial intelligence. On four key skills to financial intelligence, um, Robert Kiyosaki identified four key technical skills that anyone who um, desires financial intelligence must acquire. And those four key skills, we're going to you know, go through them one after the other, and I'm going to do you know, my best in breaking that down to the simplest of terms and languages so that we can understand and grasp because it's really important that if you really want to be financially intelligent you've got to pay attention to these four key technical skills as described by Robert Kiyosaki in his book number one one of the first of those skills that he mentioned is um, accounting now accounting it doesn't mean that you should go and become an accountant what basically Robert Kiyosaki was saying is that you have to be able to understand and interpret numbers. You have to be able to understand and interpret numbers. If you lack the ability to understand and interpret numbers, it will limit your chances and you know the, um, the extent to which you will hit that goal of being rich and wealthy. I don't know of any rich or wealthy person who does not understand or who has who doesn't have the ability to interpret numbers. And what do we mean by that? You've, you've got to be able to count. When, when numbers are presented to you, you've got to know what those numbers represent. Because if you don't know where you're making profits and where you're making loss, how do you know where you're growing and where you're re retracting or where you're retarded? If you have no ability to count or you have no ability to interpret numbers that are set before you, how then do you measure the level of your growth and how much progress you have made? So if you really seek to be financial, 
financially intelligent and if financial education means anything to you, you've got to be able to interpret numbers. You've got to be able to look at numbers and you know um, be able to say what they represent. Now, you don't need to be an accountant to know when you are making progress number-wise and when you're not making progress. If you run a business and your business is... Um, is going is moving forward or business is expanding you've got to be able to put that in pictures in terms of numbers if you're expanding say by a number of branches that you have you've got to know what each branch is producing if you're expanding by way of you know increments in in profit or growth in profits you've got to be able to know by how much percentage or at least by how much your profit has grown I mean, if, you, if, you're making, if you're growing uh, in terms of sales, you've got to understand by how much your sales are increasing and maybe when your sales started increasing before you start attributing the factors that contributed to the growth in sales or to the growth in profits of your business. If you, have got sh if you have got shares, you've got to be able to know how, what those uh, shares are producing in terms of dividends and how those shares are growing in capital and how they are growing in income and returns to you. If you own properties and you're earning rental income from your properties, you've got to know what each property is producing you and maybe what your return on investment is on that property. Basically, you've got to know how long it will take you to recoup your investment in that particular property or any, part or any investment at all. These are things that people who are financially intelligent are able to tell. And what it does is that it helps you analyze investments better because you're able to understand these things. Now, even if you are not the one who is going to be computing them, because an accountant can prepare your accounts, and a, uh, an investment analyst can analyze investments for you, but if you do not understand the numbers behind the analysis, if you do not understand the numbers behind the computation of those things, it doesn't. It won't make sense to you, because at the end of the day, you are the one who makes the decisions, and those decisions are based on those numbers. So your ability to understand numbers is a key technical skill that you need to acquire if you want to be financially intelligent. Because financial intelligence is what enables you to analyze opportunities very, very well. If you cannot tell return on investments when you are presented an investment opportunity, somebody comes to you and just says, oh, this is a great opportunity. If you invest this much into this, into this business, you know, you're going to get uh, a lot of money out of this. And then you ask the person, how much is, 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 is this going to generate me? How much do I need to put in? And what is my return on investment? And what is my break-even period? And all? When you ask these, in, these intelligent questions, the person who is presenting the opportunity to you already knows that you're not somebody who is to be messed around because you are interested in knowing your numbers and you know your numbers already and you want facts that will back those numbers up before you make it decisions. And people who ask such intelligent questions rarely make deadly mistakes because they rely on their ability to interpret numbers. They rely on their ability to know exactly what they are getting themselves into. And what helps you make that informed decision are your ability to interpret numbers. So you've got to have that technical ability. You don't have to be a technocrat basic knowledge of numbers and then your desire your desire to know more about how to analyze your investments helps you because then nobody comes to sell you a dummy because you already have the basic knowledge now some of these so, so, some of these uh, number games may not be your cup of tea you may say oh uh, when i was in in school I was not good at mathematics, so I'm never comfortable with numbers. Numbers are not my thing. Um, anything that has to do with numbers, I'm not interested. But guess what? If you are interested in acquiring financial intelligence and financial knowledge, 
you've got to start getting used to numbers. Because the world we live in these days revolve around numbers these days. The great people you hear who have made it big in business and in their ventures, they all are surrounded every single day with different numbers for them to analyze and make decisions on. Now, if you've got the resources, you can employ people who can punch these numbers for you and then present it to you in a way you understand it. And they'll break it down for you in a way you understand this. But at the end of the day, the understanding is what matters. Because if you don't understand it, you cannot make decisions based on those numbers. So, because those numbers are the basis for further investment decisions. Now, what the accounting skill or what the number skill helps you do is that it helps you identify the four most important elements of your books. Now, as a business person or even as a, as a person in your personal finance, in your family or your business, there are four um, key elements in your books, personal or business, that you really, really need to get a good grasp of. The first one of them is your income. You need to know what you're earning. You need to be very clear on what your income is. How much is coming into my pocket? How much is coming into my business? Now, your income, when I, mean, when I say your income, I mean your disposable, I mean income that's available for you to spend. In business, your turnover is not your income. You've got to be able to differentiate between turnover and income. So many people have been deceived by, the, by their turnovers, and when they see turnover in their account, they think the whole money belongs to them. Your income is what is available to you after you have removed your expenditures and you know, other costs that are associated with your business. So you have to get good grasp of your income and know exactly how much you're earning. The second element in your book that you really need to get good grasp of is your expenditure. You've got to know what is going out. How much is going out of my account every week, every month, every year, and where are those monies going to? So you know, you've got to know how much you're spending. You've got to know where you're spending them and what you're spending them on. <coughs> Excuse me. The number three element in your books you've got to get a good grasp of is your asset. Your asset basically means what you own what belongs to you, what belongs to you in cash, what belongs to you in um, fixed assets, what belongs to you in liquid assets, what belongs to you, what you own, something that you can convert to money. That is your assets. You know, some don't confuse liabilities for assets. So now that I've talked about liabilities, liabilities are the number are the fourth I'm uh, sorry, is the fourth element in your book that you need to have to get, get good grasp on. What are your liabilities? <clears throat> your liabilities are what you owe. So if you know what you own, you've got to know what you owe. Yeah, Your liabilities are debts. Your liabilities are things that you need to pay for. So those are the four elements that you need to pay attention to in your books. Your income, your expenditure, your assets, your liabilities. If you have a good grasp of these four things, then you are very much on your way to um, a good financial knowledge of where you because if you know where you stand on these four things at every at every point in time it will be very very difficult for you to veer off your financial track so your the numbers and your accounting ability is actually your mirror you know what the number doesn't just paint um, it doesn't just tell the story it paints the picture because if you know your income and you know your expenditure and you know your assets and you know your abilities, to be honest with you, your financial picture is already painted. You know what you, lo what you look like in terms of finance. The picture is clearer to you with the knowledge of these things. Any decision you make based on those things has to be informed decisions. Otherwise, you might be deceiving yourself, you know, thinking and saying to yourself, no, this is not the true picture of things. What the, the number tells you is the story, your financial story. And what it paints for you is your financial picture. And that is what you look like financially. So it helps you make the right decision to know whether you need to do more of this or you need to do less of that. Okay? 
So that is the uh, number one technical skill that you need to acquire um, on your way to financial intelligence. Number two technical skill that you need to acquire is investing. Now, investing is the art of growing money. And in most um, cases, you need money to grow money, but not always. And I'm going to explain that. So if you, if you um, aspire to be financially intelligent, you need to master the art of investing, the art of growing money. Now, the investing is the only way you can grow money to the point of getting rich. So mastering the art of investment sets you very much on the path of richness. Now, I want to um, differentiate between investment and savings. I made a Facebook post sometime last week where I clearly stated that you cannot grow rich by saving. You can only grow rich by investing. Because saving is good for, um, for the rainy day and it's good for specific purposes. But if you really want to grow rich, you need to master the art of investing or investment. No billionaire in this world became a billionaire by saving. It doesn't happen. Okay? And I am not discouraging saving. I am saying... Excuse me, sorry, I still, um, I'm still struggling with this code. I'm not discouraging the art of saving. Saving is very, very important for you. It should be part of your financial package. But if you really want to grow rich, you have to separate both things and use them appropriately. Right, you, you can save for rainy day, which is your, um, your buffer, what you can fall back on in the event of the worst happening. You can save for specific purposes, like you know, buying a car, buying a house, um, moving home for a mar for wedding. You can save for a birthday. You can save for Christmas. There are so many things you can save for. Yeah, that's that that is a very very good purpose for saving. But then, if you want to grow rich and you want to grow your money, saving doesn't offer you that element, because in this present economic circumstance savers are actually losers I just picked up um, a letter of, um, that my wife's um, savings account a financial institution sent her they said to her um, every year, every now and then we review our savings um, policy including our rates to make sure it is in line with uh, the economic circumstances and situation. And we have reviewed, reviewed our savings rates, so we wish to tell you we want to cut our savings rates. That is the interest rate paid on the savings that you have with them. And guess what the current interest rate they are offering to her now? 0.1%. 0.1%. Unbelievable. I picked up that letter and I'm like, what is the point of saving except it is for specific purpose? Imagine offering you 0.1% on your money. That money is as good as being in a current account and as good as being um, you know, held in cash. There is no difference in that. But the only reason you have to adopt the uh, the um, savings habit is for you to be able to build up something over a period of time and discipline yourself to live on less than what you um, what you earn yeah that's but for 0.1 percent how much do you think you will earn even on compounded interest basis to make you rich on 0.1 percent it can never happen so, which is why I said, if you want to save, save for a specific purpose and save for a rainy day. Do not save with intention of growing rich. It will not make you rich. Investment and the art of investing is what grows your money. Because then you get better deals when you are investing. But then while you are investing, you've got to be aware of certain factors in investment. You've got to be aware of factors like asset allocation. Asset allocation basically is where you are putting your money. Yeah, um, are you investing long term or short term or medium term? 
Are you investing in a particular sector? Are you investing in a, in a, a particular type of investment? Diversifying your investments makes a lot of sense. So asset allocation basically is where you put that money. You've also got to be aware of the risks involved in investing. Investing involves risk. No matter how safe an investment is declared, there is still an element of risk involved in it. No matter um, the guarantee you are giving in a particular investment, there is still an element of risk involved in it. Even with the banks, here in the UK, if a bank um, collapses, you get maximum of £85,000 in your account, no matter how much you had in the account. The government is guaranteeing you that you're going to get £85,000 maximum, even if you had millions. So there is always a risk. So you be aware of the risks, be able to analyze the risks, and be able to take to make informed decision, you know, and take inf you know uh, take the risks on board, but make sure that they are calculated risks. Calculated risk makes a lot of sense, because your knowledge, your financial knowledge, actually reduces the odds of you making a mistake or the odds of that risk occurring um, frequently. And even when the risk occurs, it becomes a lesson, a feedback for you. Become a more experienced investor. Experienced investors are people who have, who have actually seen the ups and downs of investments. And what forms part of their, of their experience in investment is their ability to stomach losses and stomach uh, situations that did not go very well with them as investors. So... The art of investing is the second skill that you need to acquire, technical skill you need to acquire on your way to, um, on your way to financial intelligence. Now, um, my Facebook page last week as well, I did put up a post where I described two types of investors. That there are two types of investors. The A type of investor are investors who um, invest in packaged investments. That is ready-made investments with um, a set of returns attached to them and they're already packaged and everything is set. All you need to do is to buy that packaged investment and you become an investor. Now that kind of investment is really good for those who want to play it safe and those who do not want to take that much of a risk. So you can buy the packaged investment with the returns that come from it. Maybe it's a five-year bond with um, a guaranteed set of return on that and you buy that you know you know that in five years time this is what you are getting if i want to sell the bond before five years there's an already made market where i can offer the bond and get a discounted rate yeah so there are other packaged investments that you can also you know buy out there on the market even in properties there are there are there are property investment packages who will package a property investment they have done all the analysis that is what package investment is they've done all the analysis they punched numbers they've done the investigation for you and they are presenting to you the potential returns in that um, investment sometimes the presentation does not tell you the real risks the real underlying risks in those um, investments so the, the first set of investors are those who buy packaged investments. Now, the B type of investors are those who actually create investments. Now, for you to belong to the B type of investors, like I put on my Facebook page, you have to do um, three things. First of all, you've got to identify opportunities that others have missed. There are certain investment opportunities where people have looked at and they said, no, I'm not going here. I'm not even touching it. But if you're persistent and you investigate that opportunity further, you might actually find, discover a gold mine. You know, it might also be a land mine. Okay, <laughs> so it, it, can, it, can, it can turn out both ways. But people who actually investigate opportunities further and take more risks where others are shying away. They are the people that hit it very big because they take a lot of risks and they have investigated that opportunity and they are persistent with that investigation and going forward. They, they are people who are willing to take more risks. So simply put, the more risks you are willing to take, the more returns 
you are uh, potentially going to get. The less risk you are willing to take, the less returns you are willing to, you are potentially going to get. It depends on you know your 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 disposition at every point in time while invest on the type of investor that you are. So that be type of investor that is number one. Secondly, you've got to be able to raise money for a B type of investor, not just from the banks. The banks are not the only source of uh, raising funds for investments. There are people who are out there looking for people with ideas that they can invest in their ideas. You know, there are people who are called angel investors. There are armchair investors, people who have got the money but they haven't got the time. So if you've got the time, you can trade your idea and your time for somebody else's money. It's called leveraging. Yeah, people go out there and they find property investment, like you know, here in the UK, I've done that before, and um, I'm still doing that now. I go out there, I find property opportunities. I haven't, if I haven't got the money to invest in that property, I'll find somebody who wants that property, who will buy it. The person buys it and they pay me commission for finding that property investment opportunity for them. Because I found it, I packaged it, and I presented it to them. They've got the money, but they haven't got the time to go out there and look for it. I've got the time, I'll go out there, I'll look for that property, I'll get it, I'll, I'll send the details to... Um, all my property investors on my list they look at it and they like it and they invest and then I get my commission paid on that so I do I'm leveraging on other people's money because I've got the time and I've got the idea and I can spot that so if they like the idea and the uh, the time I put in there they, they, they make the investment it becomes their investment that I get paid for doing the work so there are different ways of raising money to do all those things then, number three, as a B type of investor, you've got to surround yourself with intelligent people. People who are smarter than you in areas that you're deficient in. We mentioned account. If you're not good in numbers, look for people who are good in numbers and surround yourselves with those people. If, if you're not good in marketing, look for people who are good in marketing, who can help give you marketing ideas. Surround yourself with you know, those kind of people. If you're not good in financial um, stuff, look for people who are good in financial analysis. Surround yourself with them. If you've got to pay them, pay them. You know, there are certain things you don't have to do on your own. Gather around yourself a good team. They could be friends, they could be professionals, you know, they could be um, acquaintances. But as long as they can render the service that you need and they can give you what you want and you are in that circle and you are within them, take advantage of that. That's what you know, brilliant investors do. They assemble a good team around themselves. Whenever an, an opportunity comes up, everybody in that team will do their own job. People who are in the property investment um, world, they have, um, they have builders, they have mortgage uh, advisors like ourselves, they have um, you know, financial advisors who can point, they have accountants, brilliant accountants around them, they have architects, they have people who, are in, who help them do the planning and all the rest of them. All sorts of things, you know, even down to the cleaners, they have people who do everything for them. If you've got those, that team around you, then you are ready for, what, for whatever investment you want to do. Because once the opportunity comes up, the team around you will break it down for you quickly and you make um, an informed decision on that. The other thing about investing is that you, you've got to uh, identify what kind of investor you are. Are you a risk taker or are you a risk averse person? Listen, these two categories of people, there is nothing wrong with any of them. If you are risk averse, that is who you are. Right? You don't like taking too much risk. You just want to play it safe. That's fine. If that is you, then stick to it. But just bear in mind that you know, the returns you get on your investment reflects the kind of investor you are. If you're a risk averse person, you get a risk averse return. If you're a risk taker, you get a risk taker's returns. It means more returns, higher returns because you are taking higher risks. So if you're not somebody who is very comfortable taking risks, identify what level of risk you are able to take and take it and gradually grow your portfolio and your investments and you will get there. It may take you longer to get there, but the risk taker gets there quicker because... The things that the job-breaking opportunities that comes to them, they, people take that op those opportunities to them because they know that they are happy to take risks. So once they hit it big, 
they hit it very big. And sometimes the fall could also be devastating. But then, but because they have the capacity to absorb those risks, they can afford to take it. So if you haven't got the, the capacity to absorb those risks, please don't take them until you are sure you have capacity to absorb them. But if you're a risk taker, it means you're an adventurous investor. So you go for the adventurous investments. If you're not sure of what type of investor you are, you can talk to a professional. There are even um, online, there are online tools that help you ask you a few questions about things and they can tell you what kind of investor you are. There are online tools that you can use to identify whether you are the adventurous type, whether you are the medium type, or whether you are the cautious type of investor. Please find out the kind of investor you are before you venture into any kind of investment. Now, the number three technical skill that you need to acquire or you need to have for you to be financially intelligent is understanding the markets. Understanding the markets. Now, this is simply understanding the law of demand and supply. Understand the market and how it operates. Give the market what it wants. The market will give you what you deserve. You see, some people try playing the market. The, mar you know, the market is not easily played. Certain markets have, have been you know, established over a long period of time and there are principles um, guiding those markets. So when you hear about the stock market, the stock market has been, on, has been going on for centuries. And over those centuries, there are patterns in that market that people have followed and it has worked for them. Sometimes people try to be smarter than the market and they want to outsmart the market. And when they try to outsmart the market, the market has a, res a kind of resistance built in it that not everyone who tries to outsmart it succeeds. And the, 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 most of the crashes that happens in the markets, especially in the uh, financial markets, are as a result of people trying to outsmart the markets, trying to operate outside of the principles that have been set over centuries in the markets, trying to obtain the patterns, you know, that the markets have been set to follow over centuries. Now, very few people get away with it when they try it. But the, the, the unfortunate is that they don't get away with it for too long. Yeah? There are people who for some time are described as, as geniuses. Or that this guy is a genius in the capital market. You know, he can do magic, he can perform wonders, he can do this, he can do that. He can get away with it for some time. But after a period of time, the market always catches up with that game. And if you try playing that game again, it collapses and it collapses on you very big time. So... For you to be financially intelligent, in any market you operate in, you've got to be aware of how that market functions. You've got to understand how that market works. Even in our, in our everyday buying and selling um, activity, go to a, a lot of markets where people buy and sell goods on every day. If you do not have the goods that the market is demanding, you will not make sales. It's as simple as that. If, for example, you, if you're running an electronics shop, you know, and you haven't got the quality of goods and the kind of goods that people who come to buy electronics are looking for, you cannot make sales. If people are now looking for um, curved televisions and you're still selling, you know, the 1980 types of television, nobody's going to buy from you. You cannot make sales because the market has moved on to flat screen and you haven't got flat screen TV in your shop. Nobody's going to buy, um, you know, the big type of old-fashioned TV from you because the market has moved on. So it happens in every market that people operate in. Sometimes the market moves on, but you haven't moved on because you are still stuck in your old way of doing things. And you're blaming everyone else but yourself. The truth of the matter is that the market has moved on and you haven't moved. And you have not understood the market. So you're not giving the market what it wants. So the market is not giving you back what you deserve. The other thing I also need you to, to know is that try and find a gap in the market. In every market there is a gap. There are people who are either underserved in a particular market and they are looking for people who will pay attention to them and offer them the products or the services that they are looking for. 
that is a gap in the market. But while you find a gap in the market, the other thing you need to ask yourself is, is there a market in that gap? So, yes, there is a gap in the market, but is there a market in the gap? Is there enough opportunity in that gap that you have found to sustain you and to sustain that business? Are, are there enough people who are demanding for this service in this market such that if I put my services forward or my products forward, I will have enough patronage to sustain that business? You know, it's a very important business lesson that I learned in one of the... Um, business um, in one of business events I attended where I you know it gave me something to think about you know to find a gap in the market is one thing but to find the market in that gap also is another thing some people jump at opportunities because they say oh there's a gap in this market there's an opportunity here to you know to serve people but they have not sat down to analyze the market in that gap and by the time they jump into that market they will now realize that there is not actually enough market in that gap to sustain the business. And then the business closes. Excuse me. And the business collapses. So understanding the market is very important for you in terms of acquiring that financial intelligence that um, we're talking about. You cannot succeed in a market you do not understand. You need to understand your own market and own it. And it means focusing on your market if you focus on your market there is a greater chance of you succeeding in that market because you become the master of that market you become the master of your game you become the whole the wholesale name where you are you become the go-to person in that market because everybody now knows that this is your market that is your area because you have created enough visibility you have created you know enough impression in the market to attract enough attention to your market understand what your competition is doing in the market understand their weaknesses and then focus on your strengths because that is the way to overcome um, the weaknesses or that is the way to take advantage of the weaknesses of your competition because if you understand your your competition's weaknesses it helps you build your own strengths because your, st your strengths will now be built around the weaknesses of your competition. And when you focus on that strength, you are already taking advantage of the weaknesses of your competition. So you've got to understand the whole concept of your market before you plunge into it. If you're going into the stock market, understand how the stock market works. If you're going into the property market, understand how the property market works. If you're going into the services industry, understand how it, wherever and whatever market, products, importation, whatever you're doing, whichever one you want to focus on, it is very important that you understand how that market works before you can take advantage of it. Now, the fourth and the final technical skill that you need to acquire for you to gain financial intelligence on your way to financial intelligence is the law. According to Robert Kiyosaki, you've got to understand the law and how the law works. You cannot operate a business, you cannot run a business venture, you cannot operate any um, sort of structure in a lawless environment. Everywhere you run a business, there is a law established in that region to monitor those businesses, to um, direct those businesses, and to help you structure those businesses. So you've got to understand the law and how the law works and how to take advantage of it. The, pres the current president of the United States